Welcome back to Movies Recapped. Today I will show you a gothic supernatural horror movie from 2012, titled The Woman in the Black. Spoilers ahead, take care. Three little girls, all dressed in what looks like nursery dresses, are playing in the nursery room on their own, with porcelain dolls. Suddenly, they look towards the camera, stare for a while and without uttering a word, they stand up, hold their hands and go to the window wall. They open the three windows and they jump. Cut to Arthur Kipps, a young lawyer. His boss sends him on a business trip to a remote village, to take care of all the documents in an abandoned mansion. He is also told that this is his last opportunity, as this realty company is not a charity, and if he makes another mistake, it will be his last, he won't be given another opportunity. Arthur says goodbye to his seven-year-old son, Joseph. The nurse will take care of him meanwhile. Joseph has drawn himself, his father, and his mother in the form of an angel atop a cloud in a piece of paper. His father asks Joseph why he has drawn him with a sad face, and Joseph says that that's just the way he looks. Arthur travels by train. Arthur reminiscences about when his son was born. The boy was perfectly alright, but his wife died during the childbirth. Later, he talks to a fellow passenger, Sam Daly. They become friends fairly quickly, and Sam offers him a lift into town. After they arrive in town, Sam also invites him to dine with him and his wife, to which Arthur agrees. Arthur visits the local inn, and asks if he could spend the night there, but he is told that there are no empty rooms. Mrs. Fisher then comes, and tells him that he could spend the night in attic, and he agrees. Arthur is put into the attic, the place which the three little girls jumped from at the beginning of the film. The next day Arthur visits Mr. and Mrs. Jerome, the local solicitor. Jerome recommends that he leaves the town as soon as possible, but Arthur tells him that he will need to stay up until Friday to make a serious and fair evaluation of all the items within the house he was sent to. Mr. Jerome tells Arthur to leave his house and go home. A carriage driver is waiting to take Arthur to the train station, but Arthur insists on going to the mansion instead. The cab driver demands six shillings for the trip, remarking that no one else will take Arthur there at all. There is a thin causeway which zigzags among the marshes linking the town to the lonely isolated mansion. The driver leaves Arthur just outside the estate of the mansion. When Arthur tells him to pick him up at three o'clock, he says that it'll have to be at five, because of the tide. Arthur enters the property. He enters the house and there seemed to be no one there. So he takes a look at Joseph's drawing before setting to work in front of a pile of papers. After a few hours, he hears a strange noise coming from the room above him, and he decides to investigate. Inside one of the bedrooms, he sees a nest of ravens. A raven rushes out flying, so it startles him. Arthur thinks he's heard something, so he looks out of the window. A black shadow appears on the garden, among the tombstones. The raven flies around and softly lands on the bed. When Arthur looks out again, there is nobody in the cemetery. Arthur rushes out. The thick fog prevents him from seeing anything, or anyone for that matter. The feeling of something terrible about to happen is ominous, but it's only the driver, who has just arrived to pick Arthur up. Arthur thought that he had heard the faraway cries of children, and the driver tells him that a boy drowned in the marshes few years ago. Arthur runs to the police station in order to denounce the person who has trespassed on the property. The constable says that there is no villager who would go to that mansion of their own accord. The constable goes in the back to look for something. At that moment, two children arrive with a very sick child, Victoria, who is spitting blood after drinking lye. Arthur screams, but he can't do anything for the child. Victoria dies in his arms. He then visits the dailies for the promised dinner. The conversation is a little awkward, but everything seems to go well, until Elizabeth, Sam's wife, mentions her deceased son, and soon after goes insane. She is then sedated by her husband. In a later conversation, Sam Daly says that she believes that her son can speak through her, and that there are many superstitions in the town, but that everything is an illusion. Later that night, Arthur sees Elizabeth caressing one of her dogs, caressing and soothing it in an all-white laced cradle. He spends the night in their house. In the morning, Arthur and Sam go visit Mr. Jerome. They go to his house, and hear something in the basement, so Arthur goes to check it out, but what he finds is a terrified girl locked in a room who tells Arthur to let her alone because he has killed Victoria. The men go outside and plan to visit the mansion once again, but the villagers block the road. The villagers cry for another lost girl, and say that Arthur has caused her death, but Daly dismisses their pain as superstition. Sam drives right at them, forcing them move aside and let him pass. Sam takes Arthur to the house, and offers to pick him up at 11, but Arthur prefers to spend the night there. Sam lends him his dog to accompany him. There, Arthur lights some candles. One of the rooms can't be unlocked with any of the keys, so Arthur turns his attention to a heavy wooden box with Nathaniel Drablo written on it. He looks under the bed for something more, and sees a hand behind the door. He decides to investigate. Arthur makes a daguerreotype go round, 
and he sees for a split second, the dark eyes of the woman in black. A shadow passes by, and the dog begins to bark. Arthur follows the dog, who barks close to the tombstone of Nathaniel Drablo. When they go back to the mansion, Arthur sees the woman in black, retreating from close to the window. When Arthur goes to that room, he looks out and sees the dilapidated view. Right at his back, the woman in black appears and immediately disappears. He doesn't see her, but he feels something so he looks around. In a wooden box, he finds cards addressed to Nathaniel from his birth mother, the woman in black, signing as, Mummy. That woman was Janet, who had a tombstone alongside Nathaniel's. Through the documents, it looks like Janet gave up her child for adoption, as she was deemed mentally unfit to raise her child. It is also revealed that Nathaniel was adopted by Janet's sister Alice who keeps this as a secret and raises Nathaniel as her own son. Through many letters, Arthur comes to know that Janet was very displeased as she wasn't allowed to visit her son. After the accident that took the life of Nathaniel, his body was never found in the marshlands. Janet appears as a hidden figure in the photos, with Nathaniel as the child in the photographs. Arthur falls asleep, and the shadow of the woman in black gets close, but the dog barks and scares it. Arthur wakes up and walks along the dark corridor up to the locked room. He tries to open this door, but can't. He goes down to look for something to open it, but suddenly, it is wide open. He picks up an axe and a candle. A rocking chair is moving on its own, and for a second, we can see the woman in black rocking herself. Under the wallpaper, observed by the mechanical toys, he discloses, you could have saved him, written in blood. Going back to a window, he can see clearly the shrilly screaming face of Janet. Someone then tries to open the front door. Arthur opens it, but there is no one there. Outside, in the rainy night, he can see the images of many dead children, rotten and anguished. Running back to the mansion, he can see the black footprints of the woman in black, and he follows them to the room. He sees Janet hanging herself. Leaving the room, he sees the woman in black approaching from the other end of the corridor. Arthur encloses himself in a room, but Nathaniel grows from the bed. He opens the door and runs for his life. When he opens the front door, he finds Sam Daly, who has arrived to pick him up. Back in town, Arthur sees Jerome's house on fire. He gets into the house, and inside he can see how a girl, Lucy Jerome sets herself on fire, prompted by the woman in black, who is present there, encouraging her without words. Arthur can't do anything to save her. Elizabeth Daly tells Arthur about Janet, the woman in black. The children can speak through her, and they say that the woman in black was always present to make all those children kill themselves one way or another as her own child was lost too. They say that once the woman is seen, a child will die. Sam arrives when Elizabeth has another fit while repeating, she is coming, over and over again. Before passing out, Elizabeth draws a picture of Arthur with his son beside a train engine. Arthur convinces Sam to help him find the body of Nathaniel and reunite him to his mother by giving him a proper burial. He ties himself with a rope to Daly's car. Arthur goes in the black slimy goo of the marshlands. Finally, Sam pulls Arthur out, and he takes out what seems a hidden wagon, and within it, the body of Nathaniel. The car can't hold the wagon, which slides back into the bog, but Arthur clambers over it and out of the bog, carrying Nathaniel's corpse. They go to the mansion to bury Nathaniel. Arthur enshrouds Nathaniel's body. Then he puts the postcard sent to him by his mother and other mechanical toys around the dead body as he waits for the woman in black. Sam sees his dead son entering a room. When he follows his son and enters the room, he is imprisoned and Arthur can't hear him. The corridor gets even more darkened. The woman in black shouts too and scares Arthur, but suddenly she disappears. The other door also opens, setting Sam free. They open Janet's tomb and place Nathaniel's body on top of hers. In the next scene it seems that the woman in black still can't forgive. Some days afterwards, the two friends wait for Joseph with his nurse at the train station. The nurse goes to pay for tickets back to London as Arthur and Sam talk. Joseph releases Arthur's hand and jumps onto the train track while a train is approaching. Arthur sees the woman in black and then his eyes dart to his son walking on the tracks. Arthur jumps onto the tracks to save Joseph but the train runs them over. Sam can see all the dead children and the screaming woman in black at the other side of the track, through the gaps of the moving wagons. Arthur is holding Joseph in an empty train station. Stella welcomes them both into the afterlife and they tenderly walk on together along the tracks. So what do you guys think about this movie? Let me know in the comments below, and if you like my video, please press like and subscribe for more. I will see you guys next time.